now that kind of setup. I think that's sort of what we're picturing. So most of the time you're wearing it. So I guess if you're wandering around naked, you wouldn't have it, but there's probably not really going to be any occasion that'll be happening in the game. So by default, most of the time you would have your Moby Gars, unless, yeah, we could think of some good reason to take it away for you for, for whatever reason. Uh, Delta Mike would like to ask if ships will have a log book. A log book. Uh, like a log book as in like landed on this planet, took off, took on so many goods, sold this, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think that sort of thing. Um, uh, it's not in the design uh, currently. So it's not necessarily something that's particularly hard. I'm uh, it's really just a matter of like, uh, I think that that falls in the case of a feature that like down the road we may we may implement, but it's not not top of the priority of what we want to implement right now. Um, for multi monitors, will people be able to uh, customize their HUD, kick some of the data out to the their monitors on the side, that sort of thing? That fall into the same as the uh, second. We've actually already been doing some coding to handle multiple monitors, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, the HUD is split up into a number of parts so that we can stretch it out to make sure it fits on whatever aspect ratio you might have, uh, and that'll definitely give you some extra screen real estate to show a little more information. Yeah, so I mean, not so much of like saying this parts on this monitor and this parts on this monitor, for the reasons that Zane talked about, but uh, definitely it will handle things like Ifinity or wider displays. Um, so it sort of dynamically adjusts to your aspect ratio, a larger screen area, or a larger field of view. And your HUD suffered damage during combat. Yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, there was a little clip of some of the damage state in uh, that we've designed in the video that preceded this. Uh, there'll definitely be uh, damage reflected in the HUD. Uh, the HUD may reflect damaged individual components as well. Right, and then you've got, and since, since we have all these systems that interact with each other, if a system goes down, it won't be feeding the display on the HUD, and the HUD just won't right. be connected yeah, to seeing the weapons you can, or whatever. You can, you'll lose elements of your HUD if you, because all the systems are real and can take damage, you might lose your, your radar or your targeting computer. Right, and they're, all, and they're all dynamic. They all talk to each other via an event system. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's nothing, it's... it's uh, it's basically a messaging system inside the ship that talks. And so the items talk to the displays and tell them information. Mm -hmm. and, and if the item goes away, then they won't be getting information display right. that will go away. So uh, that's, we kind of coded a whole system for the, for the displays and the, and the ship systems that way to make it uh, to like, hopefully it will feel like a real living, breathing vehicle. Uh, and when things go down, they go down on your display. We don't have to really do any special coding. It falls out of the system. Right. Can users turn off their HUDs, uh, like in the end of Star Wars? That should, uh, that should probably be something they can do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have a problem. You, you definitely will be able to minimize stuff. But, uh, yeah, I guess if you want to, uh, you know, turn it off and use the force, go ahead. Take some pretty screenshots. Okay be really good now. Um, some confusion over what the HUD actually is. It, is it projected on your helmet? Is it in the glass cockpit? Um, what do you actually have to be wearing to see your HUD in your ship? So uh, the, the HUD, specifically in the Hornet, because it will vary on ships, is a combination. So some of it is projected on your visor. Uh, some of it will be projected in the space of your uh, cockpit in front of you. So basically anything that would be specific to the orientation of your ship itself uh, would probably be projected into the cockpit space and stuff that's information that you would do. So like targeting information or whatever, looking around will probably be on your visor, but um, we don't have it working here. But in the prototype I had, like there was a you know pretty standard sort of play, like a you know horizon line setup. And that was actually projected in sort of the front projecting the, which you can already see in the Hornet right now. You can see these sort of little uh, devices to project, and I think right now there's sort mm -hmm. of a translucent um, kind of plane sitting in front of you, and that's really where the, the spatial projection would be for the stuff that was fixed to the Hornet. And it would be a combination depending on what makes sense. It's, it's kind of confusing if you have like a horizon line or a um, you know, heading 
thing that like it needs to stay with the orientation of the ship not with which way you're looking mm -hmm. but some stuff would would naturally go with where you were looking like targeting radicals or information for that so the answer is a combination okay guys got some more hot questions for us Zane and uh, Chris and Brennan Wondering if we can talk about the command module on some of the larger ships. Will that be the same sort of HUD interface, or will that be something else? Uh, well, the same system. Well, private, I'm not sure it's going to look necessarily the same. I mean, there's a differentiation between like the display and the input um, to the actions, but the way we're designing the system is that the HUD system itself is meant to be pretty modular. So you, you know, we could have a specific look and functionality that you see in the Hornet that would be very different than what you'd see, say, in the Constellation or what you could see in the Idris Corvette, although they'll be all using the same basic system. That's why we have the ability to drive this feature. In this seat, you're only doing weapons control. In this seat, you're flying it or whatever. Um, so uh, you know, we probably would, like, you know, in the bigger ship, the command and control, you would have some of the stuff you see now, but you'd also have, like, a big sort of floating you know, hologram of like you could see situational sort of setup of all the different ships in the theater of operation mm -hmm. you're in and maybe you can click on it and sort of say okay and direct this ship to attack that ship and so it's sort of like a big hollow sphere so not too dissimilar than what you would you know you've seen in haven't seen Ender's Game but I bet you they have something like that in Ender's Game Prometheus has something pretty similar yeah. to it that kind of stuff yeah I mean I imagine the interfaces would be sort of specialized based on uh, kind of what function you're actually doing in the ship. Like if you're a weapons commander, you know, whatever function you're doing, you have a specialized interface for that you know, with the manufacturer language, the visual language applied to it. I'm wondering if uh, space weather, you know, electromagnetic interference, uh, nebula, that sort of thing will affect the HUD. Are we going to brown out, be disabled by certain types of space? Uh, That's a good question. That's a cool idea to... So the, yes, the answer is yes. It's part of the design. So the, the the display will get affected, could get interference, could go off altogether. Depends on where you are, what the environment would be. So there may be some nebulas you go into that you have to, you basically are running blind, essentially. Not too dissimilar than today's world if you're in an aircraft mm -hmm. and you get caught in an electrical storm. Users wondering about a third person HUD. Yeah, there's no, there's not going to be. There you know, the only third person HUD would be looking back at your guy and seeing some HUD being projected, like, like I said, the in the Iron Man style. But that's not useful for you. There won't be. You can't go to a chase, a chase view, um, and have all that extra peripheral vision and have all the same HUD information. I mean, that's kind of immersion breaking. Uh, so you know, when we go to a chase view, you go to a view that would be like a chase planes view versus. Um, so. So I don't know if that was someone that wanted to have the third person HUD or not have a third person HUD, but we won't have a third person HUD in the you know, in the tradition of a you know, kind of a, a more sort of arcadey shooter up setup. Let's see. Any more HUD questions, folks? Will there be electronic warfare that specifically targets other users' HUDs? That's a good question. Uh, there's definitely going to be electronic warfare. I mean, that's already designed. So yeah. there's the idea of EMP. There's uh, your radar. We have a whole set of the radars themselves. There's multiple kinds of signatures you look for. You can look for um, heat. You can look for uh, reflective signature, electro electromagnetic signature. Um, and there will be different things that you can do to counter them or shield against them or protect them. Um, how well you can track those depends on how quickly a missile can lock or... Or all the all the above. So if you're running a stealth ship, you know you may be almost impossible to target with a missile. You may have to take out with your guns and get on their tail. So that's all adds into the the idea of a lot of sort of um, rock paper scissors give and take in the in the space combat. I think, I think they're imagining some kind of electronic pulse missile I fire and it, it just knocks out your HUD for thirty seconds. Yeah, totally, hundred percent. That's so that's basically the like we already have them in our specs. So we have EMP mines. I think we have EMP missiles. We have uh, energy draining weapons. And energy generating weapons. weapons. So a lot of we have stuff that would basically affect you. I mean that's the beauty of having a procedural system. Like 
Now you could overload someone with too much heat, which could fry their systems. You could overload them with a big EMP pulse, bring down their electronics. All our stuff works in that, like if we take away power or we um, you know, do something like that, all the systems would just go out automatically. Mm -hmm. That's how it would work. Um, yeah, so we're probably out yeah, there yeah, some, like shutdown states yeah, or whatever animations. But the that. Available right now, so get them uh, quickly. Ready to crash the website again. <laughs> yes, let's, let's see if the website can stay up to this one. Um, hey, we checked with. Uh, I guess, I guess ben yeah, I think that was what Ben was on. So, Ben, we weren't meant to say that because time, the, the website crashed. Ah, well, we may have just crashed the website again. <laughs> <laughs> so far, so good. Uh, so, so uh, where are we at with Dan? On because I think we're coming up to that section, right? Right at the end. Can I have the thumbs up? So we we uh, so basically, I can't plug it into the live system, right? Okay. Well, the the addresses are sold out, so you know, I guess we. Oh, sold out again. Well, they were sold out. They were sold out before you made the announcement. But yeah, such a tease, Ben. Yeah. That's not very nice. I blame Eric. Uh, no, uh, there will be another eleven of the users later, not during the stream. So watch for that. It's really, really want one. Uh, let's go back to HUD questions. Uh, will the HUD tie into the organization system uh, for organizing your squadron, uh, interacting with your uh, group members? Well, that definitely like HUD will tie in and the displays will tie into the organization stuff, which is essentially how we're managing your friends and who you talk to. So, you know, I guess we in the, in the game look at the organization system as sort of channels, essentially. So, you know, you can have your channel for this guild or this channel for this friends list or whatever and uh, that will all be accessible via the HUD, the display systems, when you're outside your ship from your Moby Glass and so on. Let's see. HUD questions, folks. <laughs> Let's see. Can we expect random failure of systems? Uh, I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. I mean, things might wear out over time, but that that's sort of reflected as, as a, that's sort of a damage failure if it's just worn out. I don't think random. Yeah, I don't think we we got we've got the idea that like, you're, yeah, you get. Well, I mean, we definitely have the red ring of death, right? So if you overheat mm -hmm. your system, it'll take it down. But I don't think we have like a random dice roll, um, like you know, roll and if you're, you know, you go snake eyes, your ship's uh, HUD goes down yeah. or anything. There's players wondering about color blindness and cuts. <laughs> yeah, so that's one of the things I addressed in sort of like the color customization is that you know some people, I mean, there's a lot more uh, people that are color efficient than you might think. Uh, the main, the primary one is between col the colors red and green, at least differentiating between those colors. So, I mean, and also some people might have trouble uh, reading red uh, elements on a black background. So the thing I talked about with the critical alert that's red, it's by default in red, but you can, that's customizable. Uh, so you can assign a different color to it, um, you know. But most, most for the most part, like the HUD is actually like pretty uniform in color. Uh, I'm wondering about customizable displays in the Hornet, what they can display on them. So in the Hornet, like the some of the displays, uh, there's physical, there's the physical displays in the Hornet, and they That's display the information thing. too. But um, the idea is that you can take information on those physical displays in the Hornet. And uh, project it onto your HUD. So things like like the, some of the different displays will display different categories of information. So, for example, like one category is uh, your weapon systems and your ship systems. But you can actually take the whatever whatever is on those Hornet screens and 
have it mapped to your HUD. And then you can actually have tabs in your HUD that you can cycle through uh, to pop out different uh, information streams, which I think was shown in the preview, but I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I'm not in the preview, but that's definitely part of the design. You should be, like, you yeah. can set you, the, this is the weapons display, this is the ship status display, and you should be able to pull them up and transfer them to your HUD and put the monitors away. That's kind of the idea. And that's generally the idea of um, the all the ships. I think the, the the Hornet's probably got the most displays in it because, again, it's a dedicated dogfighting military ship. Um, whereas something like, say, the even the 300i or the Constellation is not quite the same. So it's more about, okay, well, I'll pull it up on my hood or I'll put it down on my one display, but it's not so focused on having so many displays giving you so much information at one time. Um, because it's really just a sort of matter of what roles you'll use it for. I'm wondering if the HUD can be upgraded, like a, a ship component. Uh, so most definitely, that's part of the design right there. We're going to be able to upgrade it. So like just general things like, uh, you know, at the lowest level, like targeting computer, you can maybe only target one target at a time. You get the upgrade, you can have two or three or four targets, simultaneous targeting, simultaneous locking. Um, and the same on the HUDs, like so. Some so we're going to allow you to have upgrades on the HUDs that maybe give you, um, you know, more information or a different kind of information. Um, so all our items, uh, including sort of the internal ones like the avionics ones, all generally are designed to have multiple levels to them. So you know, maybe a more advanced one would allow a higher level of customization than the basic one would. Mm -hmm. Question, are, are you intending the HUD to make up for visibility issues in some of the ships, or is that something that will be addressed in the future? Uh, uh, well, so that's probably related to the Hornet canopy and the, the uh, feeling like the struts of the canopy are too big. Um, so we may do a little bit of work on... Yeah. What's that? There's the freelancer has the thing in the middle, and they have something about and it. And I'm just saying, if people go back to last year... And they look at the, the, hey, let's make this a big bubble canopy so you have better visibility. Everyone wanted to lynch uh, poor Jim Martin, who was the conceptual designer, and us for doing it. And uh, so we changed it back to the concept art, and now there's massive threads bitching that there's no visibility. But, what, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> Can never win in that situation. Uh, but, uh, but on a dogfighting one, it's more important than, say, something like the freelancer, which is, is less focused on dogfighting. Um, but there's a dynamic look system that I talked about in the beginning of this live stream that we haven't shown yet that's still it's part of this unified first look but, but essentially the idea behind it is that when you're in the cockpit uh, just like in real life um, your focus is dynamically changing so if I'm looking at a, something outside the cockpit say I'm not looking like uh, down in my cross proximity but outside say a ship I'm trying to tra trail what happens is the field of view will narrow down and my focus will sort of basically be shifted in that direction so essentially what will happen is or you know what what right now because we have a very wide field of view right now because it's sort of basically trying to be wide so you can look down and see your legs in the cockpit and generally the cockpit and, and then look up but if you're actually chasing a ship and focusing on them you're just by human nature you just generally tend to tunnel vision and so we're going to dynamically do that as you look around depending on what you're focusing on we're actually going to be casting a ray out from the eye and seeing what you're focusing on and we're going to be changing the field of view so if you're if you're focusing and looking at something outside your cockpit your cockpit will probably go more out of focus and your field of view will narrow when you come back down to look inside your cockpit it will be a wider field of view and 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 things outside will be out of focus but things inside will be and that's sort of a dynamic look system and i think that will help with some of the visibility issues um, obviously, a HUD is there to give you sort of um, a, a increased situational awareness, and obviously, it uses part of that. Uh, and then again, like I said, there will be some ships that some work, like you know, the Hornet canopy will probably do a bit of work on to reduce the, the size of the struts. But I think when it's all put together, it will all feel pretty awesome and pretty immersive. Be patient, everybody. Uh, people are wondering if they can upgrade their. HUD from one ship to another, so if they like the 300i HUD, can they port it over to the Hornet or vice versa? Uh, that's that's a good question. We sort of, uh, you know, uh, we talked about making them ship specific. Um, 
I mean, you know, the other option would be HUDs could be, you know, like manufacturer specific. There's, you know, the equivalent of GE makes this HUD and Samsung makes this HUD kind of thing. So we haven't really decided that. Um, so I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure you can take your Anvil Hornet HUD and plug it into the 300i because there's some specific stuff for the the Hornet HUD that is for the Hornet versus the 300i. Um, but we may have some more sort of generic manufacturers that you know is maybe a more consistent interface across the ships. Uh, the system will definitely handle it. It's just a matter of uh, because the HUD and the information display is all handled with vehicle items, and they completely are not they're not locked to the ship. So just the same way, like if you're in the hangar, you can move guns back and forth. Um, well, basically everything, thrusters, any avionics package, uh, heat coolers, batteries, power plants, all of that are, are the, essentially items that will dynamically swap and you can plug into different ships. Now, some ships won't accept a certain kind of item or whatever, but, uh, but, but generally there's nothing in the system that is like hard-coded to one specific ship. It's very data-driven. All right. Um, let's see. One user would like to know what your favorite ship is, Chris. Uh, well, it would probably be the Constellation. Um, and I'm working very hard right now, actually, to uh, get the um, instance physics working, which we, we have a, a prototype of, uh, whereby you know, you're flying the ship around, and uh, all that works perfectly in its own physical world, but you're in another physical world, i.e. the global space. And uh, that's all working then. That's the, that's the awesome in the ship, dogfighting, getting, getting in the gunner's turret, fighting while someone else is flying it, while someone's you know, trying to take you out in their Hornet or um, 300i or whatever. So I would say the Constellation is kind of my favorite just because it gives you that promise. It's like an experience that I haven't seen at that level of fidelity uh, um, in the game. And then I think probably my second favorite is the Hornet. I mean, I, re I really like the Hornet. It feels solid and like a great sort of military dogfighter. And some of the stuff, you know, some of the tweaks and upgrades we've done are really nice for it. And uh, so I'm just looking forward to you know, seeing all these things that we're sort of, I don't know, like 70, 80% of the way there all come together. Uh, so like of all the fidelity and the touches and have a, have a, have a full on dogfight without going, Oh, there's a graphical glitch here. or Oh, there's a crash here. Uh, because I, I, I the, my sense is it's just going to feel really like good and solid and, and fun. And then someone who wants to know if it's secret, I've advertised myself. Oh, no, not. Uh, let's see. Can the dynamic field of view be turned off? Uh, we'll probably allow that to be turned off. I mean, it's just one of those things we're not forcing to do it, but that'll be sort of the one that would be the main one. Uh, let's see. When are we going to hear more about the Origin 890? Okay, Coming up. Yeah, I would say uh, would, next year when we would we'll show you what it looks like. So we got to we got to save some stuff for next year. It's like uh, yeah, we got to we got to pace ourselves here. Yeah, you have to remember we just we're just unlocking these chips now, and then that will go to design, and then art, and then you'll follow the process. So you'll see them as they're developed. Oh, go on, you can ask that question. I was, I was gonna, just going to say that I think it's what we were going to show um, uh, a little bit of fun thing that we've got playing around. We use it internally for uh, like our balancing and testing. And uh, this is something that Eric hinted at uh, that we're, we're, we're going to um, put in the hangar. Um, not tomorrow, but uh, hopefully by the end of the year um, so people can have some fun. Uh, so I haven't actually... I. I can uh, I can see this. I can yeah I think you I think you'll be in a shot if you sit by Brennan. So I so we see it all upstairs, but we don't have a way of actually demoing it live because of uh, the way we're set up here. Um, so you're on the mic, yeah, but uh, yeah. but uh, this is you just captured this from your machine upstairs, right? Yeah, so we thought now. this would be kind of fun. <laughs> all right, so uh, 
Uh, you want to? We're going to play this. You're going to talk us through it. How does this work? Sure, uh, absolutely. Uh, he so, can talk through while you play right. it. Go ahead, run the video. So how it's set up here is uh, we have the uh, Gatling gun that's uh, hooked up onto the Hornet that we're setting up for uh, setting up for dogfight V1. Uh, you can see the scale of the thing is just massive. So we got uh, our test weapon mount here. Uh, so I'm getting into the chair right now where you can actually uh, just interact with it. It's going to swivel out for you and you can actually jump in. It's going to pull you back in. And this whole thing is now like a whole firing range for you guys. So we just set this up so you can actually shoot at all these different targets. So a lot of these are all set up uh, thanks to Forrest as well for and Zane for these guys actually setting uh, this target up uh, real fast for us. Uh, so I got the, uh, the Gatling gun. Uh, but also the best part about this whole thing is with uh, the stuff that we have in the hangar, uh, that whole hollow table, uh, you can actually swap out the guns. So here, check this out. So if you guys are all familiar with the hollow table, you can actually pull in the, the weapon mount itself and then go over to the weapons uh, table over here. I'm going to pull over uh, one of the other, uh, actually the laser repeater, and I'll uh, plug that in. And then you can uh, see it's actually swapped the actual mount and the weapon itself on the mount. And then that'll completely switch out the actual uh, weapon that's available. And now you can actually shoot that one too. So it completely changes the effect, changes everything. So it's uh, just demoing off exactly like what uh, the weapons are going to be capable. And I was using this uh, test platform actually to uh, test out like the Hornet destructibility. And of course, uh, uh, totally fixed up yet. But at least from here, you can actually uh, test out all the different weapons that, uh, that we're actually going to be pumping out for dogfight. So thanks a lot, Zane. Thanks a lot, Forrest, for uh, rapidly helping us out with this. Um, cool. Well, I, that's... Uh... So yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna uh, get you guys a, a weapon test platform. Uh, we may even do a, a thruster firing thing, and we may have a few more uh, surprises for the firing range stuff that exactly. We're, exactly we're thinking about, but we won't we won't quite do that yet. So uh, we'll let you. So basically, even if even even if the, the you're not getting dogfight in the next few weeks you can blow things up <laughs> <laughs> exactly uh, and it's kind of cool so uh so it's what skype would stop recording and but we're good here right yeah yeah the skype's fine that's yeah. fine okay right Perfect. um so anyway yes yeah, so i uh i um i hope you uh like that so i guess uh, there's 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 uh should we want to take a couple of questions for dan on the firing thing sure. why not if go we can ahead. Yeah, anybody have any questions about the firing uh, range? Ask them in the chat room. So, of course, also with the firing range, like, uh, that was just a basic lockup. What I wanted to do later on is, like, have it so that, like, different targets would pop up and then you would actually have to aim and shoot at those different ones. Uh, so that was just a quick mock-up of what we currently had. Yeah, Wait, yeah, will there be a rail guy? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, no, there will be a rail gun. I mean, that's actually one of the gun types that we have. Uh, I'm not sure there's going to be a rail gun in the next week or so. I mean, generally our big rail guns are all big cap ship cap stuff. Ship, yeah, yeah. So uh, you you won't be able to mount that in your hangar <laughs> unless you blow your hangar out. All right. I have a question. I'm wondering about using their uh, handheld weapons in the firing range. Uh, well, we probably I mean, that, that's uh, that's also something we're, that we haven't we're not ready to show you that, but we're actually making really good progress on on that stuff, and so we'll have a future update on that. But yeah, I mean, we're we're uh, you know that stuff's actually quite easy because you have got a lot of that out of the box, and we're actually exactly. doing some really cool additional stuff for zero G and a bunch of other stuff. But that's uh, that's that's a, a, a kind of future update but that was when i was saying at the top of the the live stream that you know because we've had such great funding i've been able to go wider than i thought we would do sooner so we're going to be able to um be delivering stuff for people to play around and enjoy for the next uh next year and weapons <laughs> crossbow yes yeah, crossbow we're doing with yeah. uh <laughs> <Yeah>. crossbow <laughs> 
My stream is weak. Oh. All right. Uh, weapons testing. Will there be unlimited ammo for the ballistics weapons in the uh, testing range? People are already worried about uh, having a tank, right? <laughs> now, what are that? With <laughs> well, that cruel. Uh, no, I think you would. Uh, I think you. Although to, to another thing that we haven't talked about, but 